Upcoming content, Triceratops, Myasaura and a whole bunch more was discussed in the IELTS latest dev blog, the first one for the year, and today we're talking all about that, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Triceratops was shown off quite extensively by the animator Brian in this month's dev blog. Essentially the first round of locomotion animations for the adult and the juvenile Triceratops are now out of the door and progress now switches to the injuries, the animations for injuries for these locomotion animations. So for the adult we get to see these, the walk animation, the trot animation and the run animation. And for the baby, it's the same animations, but I'm gonna go over them again so you can see them as the baby. So you get the walk animation, the trot animation, and the run animation as well. And that's all the animations that we have showcased for Triceratops so far. They look really nice so far really great stuff to see these are very very fluid animations but equally it's a great way to start the year and what a great way to dive into this year's dev blog for the isle of rima in 2024 with triceratops and upcoming apex which we could actually see come to the game this year which i outlined in this video which talked about what you could expect in the game in 2024. kiss and kitten also mentioned both rex and trike in the end of the dev blog by saying this Thus far, we've been moving along at the nice pace in getting the Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops and Myasaura functional. Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops are on pace with one another development wise, pretty much being as evenly matched in production as they're likely to be in game. Once spar testing for Diablo Ceratops is solid, the giants will get their sparring animations done and then they can battle it out in testing before we unleash them upon you. So that actually transfers us quite ne nicely into the next playable that I'm talking about, which is Myasaurus. <laughs> Another upcoming dinosaur is Myasaura, and one thing that I do want to mention in this dev blog, Kiss and Kitten actually went in depth about how the implementation of new dinosaurs goes about, gave Myasaura as an incredible example, I recommend you read it, I'll probably try and get the dev blog linked in the comment section or the description so you can check it out there, but that being said, Kissen spoke about the stances for Myasaura and how it is important because it helps set the stage for future hadrosaurs like that of Parasaurolophus, Shuntangosaurus and Corythosaurus, which are all upcoming hadrosaurs planned for the game. That being said, we do actually get to see an example of the bipedal stance for Myasaura and how it will look. We also get to see how it will look like with some abilities and attacks performed while it's in bipedal stance mode. Now, I'm going to get some of these mixed up and messed up because I don't actually know the exact attacks, but they did say that there is a kick attack, there is a stomp attack, and then there are other attacks attacks where it's throwing its weight around and they all look pretty good there's four animations or five i think that showcased it while it was in its bipedal stance stage and it's really nice we also get two more which also showcase it in the quadrupedal animation set where you get a headbutt attack and you get a some form of leap stamp forward attack thing which equally looks really good this is mainly a port because as far as i'm aware the model is although getting upgraded it's vastly unchanged from how it was in legacy and i think the same thing applies with how it is it just gets that overall avrima touch up so it might actually be one of those creatures we see relatively soon because of how quick this is progressing there is a lot of upcoming content planned for the game. Of course, all of that I'm talking about is upcoming content. Triceratops, Myasaur, Tyrannosaurus, it's all upcoming. But these are some stuff that you could probably see in the relative next few updates for the game. For example, Skin Creator has been updated with new AI and they've added the Skin Creator to be now available on the menu for the game so you don't need to load into a server just to customize skins. There's also Global Chat returning as a feature that can be enabled on community servers which I'm very excited to see the return of. However, there is more general content updates that are coming and these are them. There'll be changes to the migration system or the migration zones because some species will now be unassigned from the northeast migration zone due to the huge amount of species that spawned there and had migrations there. Now, the ones that are being unassigned are being moved to the jungle as well as their spawns too. Changes for stamina as well. Stamina changes have been a focus for all species. Time resting is still within the acceptable range, but they are looking to further reduce 
the stamina costs and of actions and the ability to regenerate stamina during certain states of locomotion based off player stamina. Hunger and Thirst as well. These have their values changed or to be changed because when Gateway released the changes and the values for Hunger and Thirst, they didn't get changed. They were kept the same values as they were on Spiro. So this means that it made it so you'd lose your thirst and hunger a lot faster on a bigger map, made it harder to find food and survive. So now it should be more forgiving. Growth times have been adjusted across the board in accordance to the new Hunger and Thirst times and diet changes because diets have now been adjusted into new tiers. This originally was inadequately rewarding players who had two or three nutrients of their preferred diet. Having a mixed diet now rewards the best bonuses and will greatly increase growth speeds. There's also additional consideration for elder and mutation systems once they arrive. So those are the main points there. There are some smaller points but there is also a huge swathe of dinosaur considerations as well where the devs just outline all the stuff they're not happy with dinosaur wise and they plan to change them i'm not going to include them in this video it's a big slog and it's probably one of those things that they'll probably explain the changes that they're going to make and release that when it comes but you can check it out in the dev blog we get some final things it's going back to the dinosaurs some stuff regarding herrerasaurus and diablo ceratops going full circle here back to the dinosaurs Herrera and Diablo. Let's start with Herrerasaurus. Wedge has essentially been working on the sounds that are outstanding and didn't make it to the release of Herrerasaurus. For example, he's implementing and designing a new sound for the latch. Before, it was a placeholder sound, and apparently this was one of the things that the community had the biggest gripe about regarding Herrera. And overall, they are also working on improving the stealth capabilities while still giving a realistic sound representation. Now, skirting into Diablo Ceratops. Diablo's audio is now getting worse. It's now the priority. Work has begun on the vocals for the juvenile stage and they've also had a pass around the adult stage vocals to get to grips with it all. Over half of the sounds for juvenile Diablo Ceratops have now been completed and that task then moves into February and probably once the juvenile sounds are completed they'll go back over or they'll go back over the adult sounds. Anyways guys that's everything regarding the IO news from this dev vlog. The main important things here. Let me know what you think. Are you excited? Are you not? If you want to check out another video, I recommend this one where I outlined everything that you could expect coming to the aisle this year in 2024. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Peace.